Good day to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It's great to be with you. And in, the, in our church today, we hear about the new evangelization. It's a very important aspect of the life and mission of our church today. But unfortunately, for many lay Catholics, they do not know about the new evangelization or the call to the new evangelization. They might not have heard of it at all. Or for those who might have heard of it being talked about, they have not really understood what is it really all about. And then for those who might have an inkling as to what it might mean, they have not lived it out. They have not applied themselves to this call to the new evangelization. But evangelization is the most important aspect of the life and mission of our church. Because what we have is a missionary church. Our church is supposed to be out on mission. And even when, you know, as most people are concerned today, they look at all the uh, challenges that are all around them, uh, challenges to family renewal, and then there's poverty, there's criminality, there's pollution, and so many other different aspects, and governments of the world and people of goodwill are trying to address many of these things. But when you really come down to it, at the end of the day, what is of crucial importance is a change in the hearts of people. It is conversion. And all of these things are happening because of sin and because of the work of the uh, evil one. And so if we want to resolve all the social issues that are around in the church, it always starts with a human person, with a change of heart, with repentance for sin, and with turning to Jesus in faith. So this new evangelization is very, very crucial today for a number of reasons. First of all, very importantly, people are dying in their sins. There is a tsunami of evil that is overwhelming the whole world. There is deep darkness. There is the culture of death the assaults against faith, family, and life. And many people are being lost. They're dying in their sins. They need to be reached before it is too late. Secondly, we are actually losing Catholics by the day. Many have left the church, actually, many Catholics, uh, and, and been absorbed by, by the world. But many are also being taken by sects and even cults. And that's quite a shame. You have Catholics who are already in the one true church, living the one true faith, but they are still being lost. And that is happening every day. And then thirdly, as a result of all of this, you, we have the parable of the lost sheep where one uh, sheep is lost out of a hundred. But the reality in the church today is that out of the 100 sheep, 99 are lost. The many, so many lay Catholics are, 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 they, they, they uh, are not fully living out no. the, the life of faith that has been given to them. And then we even see that uh, the enemy has already come within the church. Church has always been warned that uh, there would be wolves and lions that will seek to devour the sheep, and that is happening today. So who is reaching out to these lost sheep? And how will they be reached? Well, the, our church talks about renewing evangelization and basically saying that, well, okay, we have all of these ministries, we have all of these programs, let's intensify them. It is very, very crucial during these times. But it cannot just be that. You cannot keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. That, according to Einstein, is the definition of insanity. 
There has to be something different. There has to be something new. Even when we talk of evangelization, evangelization is 2,000 years old. So what is new when we talk about the new evangelization? Well, it might be the methodologies, it might be the greater ardor, but most important is a new vision. To look at what has always been there, what is there, and how uh, the church has seen this uh, whole uh, environment in the world since the time of Jesus, and to have a new vision. Specifically, some elements of that. First of all, our basic target for evangelization are Catholics. That is, lapsed Catholics. Because many Catholics today are what you would just call baptized pagans. They are Catholics in name. But they are lapsed. They are not fully living out uh, the, the, the life of Christ that has been placed uh, in them. So that's our most basic target, our fellow Catholics. Secondly, we need to look to lay empowerment. Now the church has always spoken about lay empowerment, has always described the laity as the sleeping giant. And it does seem that in... Uh, these, these days, the giant has been stirring, but the giant is still uh, drowsy. It's not fully uh, awake. You know? It's not uh, conscious of what uh, they, their call and their importance in the life of the church uh, is supposed to be. You know? And then for those lay people who might want to serve more, who might want to do more, they need the how-tos, they need the programs, they need the effective ways of going about their, their work. They need to be taught, they need to be led in all of this. Now thirdly, when we talk about the new evangelization, we need to talk of a truly massive work. Why? Well, because 99 of the 100 sheep are lost. That's a lot of sheep that needs to be found and to be brought back into the, the, the sheepfold. You know? And what, what actually needs to happen, because we're losing many Catholics to, to sects and to cults, because in many places in the world, especially where parishes are very large, uh, we need to go out there, into the grassroots, at the peripheries. We don't just wait for Catholics to come and participate in the life of the, the, the parish, but we need to go out there. The sects, the cults, they are out there. And that's why they are the ones who are able to, to get our unwary uh, Catholics. So this work needs to be massive because there are so many that need to be reached. Uh, I just want to do some quick math, which uh, you can actually do when you talk to your pastor or your parish priest. Uh, now let's take, uh, well, in, in the, in the uh, developing world, like uh, India, the Philippines, our parishes are very large. In the uh, Western world, like Australia and the U.S., the parishes are uh, smaller. You know? But let's take the Philippines, for example. The average parish would have about uh, 25,000 uh, parishioners. You know? And let's assume that that already excludes the uh, infants or the very, very sick and elderly who will be excused from going to, to Mass each and every Sunday. So we have 25,000 Catholics, 500 go to each Mass on a, on a Sunday or anticipated Saturday. There are five Masses in all, so that means 2,500 uh, every week will be at Mass. That's only 10%. Here in the Philippines, our churches are packed on Sunday, before the lockdown, that is. But people people think, wow, this is so packed, the, the, the faith is so vibrant. But that is only a very, very small percentage. Well, but what if in your particular parish it is more than 10%? Well, let's say it's 30%. Is that acceptable? No. Let's say it is 50%. Half of all Catholics who should be there at Mass are actually there. Is that acceptable? It is not. 
What is acceptable? 75%? No. 90%? No. 99%? No. If one sheep is lost, that sheep needs to be to be to be found. So, how do we reach all of them? In that hypothetical parish with 25,000 adults, uh, if, if uh, 2,500 go to church regularly, so that leaves 22,500 to be reached. Now consider the programs in your parish. You, you have many programs, you have ministries, you have many groups, uh, not just ministering to the Catholics that are already active, but try to uh, bring, bring back uh, the lost sheep. And let's say they're able to reach and effectively bring back 500 persons every year. How long would it take at 500 persons every year to reach 22,500? 45 years! We cannot wait that long. As I said, people are dying in their sins. This work is urgent, it is critical, it needs to be done right now. Okay, what else? What about this uh, new uh, evangelization? What are aspects of it? Well, one thing that is very, very important and crucial is the methodology of Pentecost. You know, you, you, know, uh, you do know what happened uh, on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down upon the disciples and they were empowered. Peter preached one sermon and uh, 3,000 people were converted. And that is what is needed as well today. You know? And people have lost sight of Pentecost. And Catholics, uh, when you talk of Pentecost or Pentecostal, they automatically think, ah, you're, you're, you're one of those uh, Protestant groups. But no. Why should this term Pentecostal be co-opted by our Protestant brethren? The church was born out of Pentecost, established on the day of Pentecost. And Pentecost in that the Holy Spirit came down upon the people of God and, and changed them and radically transformed them and touched their lives and put in their hearts a zeal for proclaiming the gospel. All of that is so very, very uh, critical. We need the so-called baptism in the Holy Spirit. And, and, and you know, you can get an arg into an argument with, with some clerics that uh, baptism in the Holy Spirit happened during the sacrament of baptism. And sure, that is true. Uh, we, we don't dispute that and reinforce in the sacrament of uh, confirmation. But why is it that so many baptized and confirmed Catholics are living such <laughs> either bad lives or, or just lapsed in their faith? There needs to be uh, a renewal as an adult. There needs to be a renewed infilling of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that there can be an outpouring of this zeal to proclaim the gospel of salvation in our Lord Jesus Christ. Even when you, we, we talk about the spirit and methodology of Pentecost, you know, in the church we talk about spiritual gifts. Now you can try this with your with your pastor or with other church uh, leaders. So you ask them, uh, how many spiritual gifts are there? And normally they would tell you seven. And that's a correct answer. Uh, it comes out of the list from Isaiah uh, 11 verses 2 to 3. And uh, those seven gifts are uh, wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength. Uh, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. So that's correct. Those are uh, spiritual gifts. But there are another set of spiritual gifts. And the main list uh, for that is in 1 Corinthians 12. You know? And there are nine gifts that are mentioned there. You know? The expression of wisdom, the expression of knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment of spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues. The difference between the two is very, very crucial. The, the seven gifts are bestowed on us uh, uh, during the sacrament of baptism and reinforced by the sacrament of confirmation that enables us to grow in holiness, to be truly like Christ. It is, it is personal. It is God's grace upon us as persons. 
But the nine gifts, including a number of other gifts in other passages in the Bible, are intended for service, especially for the work of evangelization. And Paul says, everyone is given a gift. But you need to put all of these gifts together. There are apostles, there are prophets, there are evangelists, there are teachers, and, and the many different uh, services are, that are within the church. You put all of these gifts together and acting as one unified body, you're able to do uh, effective service for the life of the church. So Pentecost is very, very crucial, which is not so much appreciated by Catholics today. And then a fifth thing about this new evangelization is it really needs to engage the whole church. As I mentioned earlier, unfortunately, uh, the church seems to have lost her, her uh, missionary dimension or missionary zeal. We're engaged in so many, many different things. Our parishes are very, very busy. There are so many ministries. But the work of evangelization seems to be neglected. It's not there at the forefront. It uh, is not seen as of uh, great critical uh, importance. Or maybe evangelization is even, even defined in different ways as more of a focus on social actual, social justice issues rather than the proclamation of the gospel of salvation in Jesus. But there is a need to, to engage uh, the whole church to return to that basic understanding of evangelization and, and mission. And in the parishes, the many different programs, the many different ministries, the, the different groups, the basic ecclesial communities, the small communities, all of these are, are blessings, but they cannot just be going off on their own. Yes, they have their own particular aspect of work but it needs to be uh, integrated it needs to be interconnected there needs to be a thread that courses itself through all of these uh, different groups and works and that is the whole aspect of evangelization so brothers and sisters what should be the lay response to the call to the new evangelization well i hope and pray that the holy spirit will inspire uh, many different people and groups to come out with their responses. But for us, one particular response is the Live Christ, Share Christ mission. Now, what would be the pur purpose of the Live Christ, Share Christ uh, mission? Well, first of all, uh, it has to do with the very mission of, of Jesus. So we're talking about mission. We're talking about being a missionary church. So... Uh, what, what, what is the, the uh, marching orders of our Lord Jesus Christ to us? What did Jesus, when he called his disciples to the mountain before he finally ascended into heaven, what did he tell them? In Mark 16 verse 15, he said, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. In Matthew 28, 19, he said, Go and make disciples of all the nations. There's that operative, very small, short uh, word, go. You know? And this is the Great Commission. This is the final instruction, marching orders, the most important aspect of our, the life and mission of the body that Jesus has left behind. You know? So that is what we are uh, supposed to be engaged in. We are a missionary church. God did establish the church in order to carry on the work that he has, he has started. And of course, it is through our church by which we can reach all Catholics in the world. Because as we know, the, our uh, parishes are in, in every place in the world and they cover uh, the, the territorial areas in the world. And so this is one really practical way by which we can do this work of evangelization and reach all Catholics. Secondly, this is about the call to mainstream Catholic lay evangelization. Now, there, there are four important words in that, uh, starting from the last going to the front. First of all, is evangelization. So that's what we're talking about. The proclamation of the gospel of salvation in Jesus. Secondly, it is about being lay. This 
time is a call to the laity, to, to a call to lay empowerment, that we need to realize uh, who we truly are, uh -huh. that we fully participate in the very ministry of Jesus as priest, prophet, and king. And we are supposed to take our place. We're not just looking to and dependent on the, the clergy or the consecrated persons, but we ourselves are called to participate in this very mission. And then thirdly, it is Catholic. It is focused on the re-evangelization and the renewal of the Catholic Church. It's just reaching out to our lapsed brethren, uh, the baptized pagans, so, so to speak. And then uh, the fourth word that is important, it is to mainstream. It is not just one of the many different works that we do in the church. It's not just on the periphery. It is on the mainstream. It is central. It is the most crucial aspect of the life and mission of our, of our church. Why is it necessary to mainstream Catholic lay evangelization? Because 99 of the sheep are lost. There's so many that need to be, to be reached. And we need to go at this work, you know, uh, concerted effort uh, we, with great uh, zeal and determination and, and endurance. And the intent is to bring lapsed Catholics back to God and back to the church. That is so uh, important. And then, of course, to be able to do that, uh, we need to raise workers for the harvest. Jesus did say, you know, there, there are so many sheep that are, uh, that, that are abandoned uh, and, and the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So as the master of the harvest to raise up laborers for the harvest. And so uh, that, that can happen when we're able to bring live Christ, share Christ into the parishes because there are many workers already that are there. And they just need to be reoriented. They need to be told what the priorities uh, ought to really be in the call to the new evangelization. They need to be equipped with, with the autos. And that's how we can come up with so many more workers beyond ourselves you know, in MFC. So many more workers for the harvest. And then thirdly, uh, an important purpose for the Live Christ Here Christ mission is because we called by God, called to be the people of God, Catholics, ought to become true Christians. There are many Catholics who are not Christian at all. And there are many Catholics who uh, fail in the fullness of uh, life as a, an authentic Christian. And so what needs to happen? People, three things. People need to meet Christ, to live Christ, and to share Christ. And this is a call for each and every Catholic. First of all, we need to meet Christ. That means conversion. That means metanoia. That means entering into a deep, intimate, personal relationship with Jesus. That means having Him at the center of our lives. He is, he is our hope. He is our trust. He is our, our friend. He is always there uh, with us. We can be secure in the future because He is there. We know Him intimately, not just as our Lord and Savior, but also as our uh, dear friend. And then we need to live Christ. And to live Christ is not just striving to be a good person. Even atheists can be good persons. But to live Christ, and, and many, many lay Catholics uh, do not know really about these calls, but to live Christ is to live a life of holiness and discipleship. We are called to be holy. 1 Peter 1 verses 15 to 16, we read there, As he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in every aspect of your conduct, because it is written, Be holy because I am holy. We are to attain to the very holiness of God, not just being good persons, but to, to be another Christ, to be like Christ himself. You know? In fact, Jesus said, we must be perfect, be, be made perfect. In, in Matthew 5 verse 48, he said, uh, so be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. That's amazing call. You know? But that is the reality of it. God loves us so much and we are truly children of God that we need to reflect the very image and likeness of God. We need to be like Him. We need to fully walk in the, in the path of Jesus in this world. 
And then there are aspects of discipleship that many Catholics today do not understand or appreciate. For example, uh, one definition of discipleship was given by Jesus himself in Luke 9 verse 23 where he said, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. So, if you wish to follow Jesus, if you want to be a follower, if you want to be a disciple, three things are important. Self-denial, embrace of the cross, following Jesus. Who is into self-denial today? In the world today, many Christians are out there looking for comfort, for convenience, and what will satisfy them. Uh, even as maybe they're trying to strive to be good people, they are looking to their own priorities, their own preferences, their own agendas, their own uh, pleasures. Might not necessarily be wrong, but if you are called to be a disciple, you are to deny yourself so that you can offer yourself totally to Jesus and allow Him as the Master to tell us how we are to live our lives. He owns our lives. He dictates on our lives. And then we are to embrace our crosses each day. Well, people today don't like crosses. They don't like suffering. They don't like uh, pain. But all of these are part and parcel of the Christian life. And the only question, it's not that will this come into your life, but how will you handle it when these challenges uh, do come? You know? do, do you pray and if your, your burden is not lifted, you get angry at God, you turn away from God? Or do you embrace them? Do you enter more deeply, knowing that we are so totally dependent on God, that on our own we are nothing, that uh, we need His, His, the fullness of His grace and 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 the empowerment that comes from His uh, Spirit, you know, and when we embrace our cross, that allows us to to be humble, and and to avoid that great sin that is pride, and it gives us the privilege to partake even in a very, a very small way, in the cross of Jesus, which is the cross of uh, salvation. And then we follow Him. We follow in His footsteps. We obey His commands. Uh, we listen to His words and we act on them. We, we don't uh, do our own thing or have our own interpretation of what it means to be a good Christian. But we simply look to Jesus, His words, and the age-old teachings that uh, we have in our church, and we simply act on those. That's discipleship. So that's living Christ. And then there's a third thing. We meet Christ, we live Christ, and we share Christ. There are also many Catholics who, well, you might say they are good Christians in that they try to live good lives. They might even be trying to live holy lives. But there might still be something that is missing. It is actually sharing Christ. It is participating in the work of uh, evangelization, proclaiming the gospel, being witnesses uh, to Christ in the world that we, we are living in. Most lay people do not do so. Maybe they don't, simply don't know or they don't know, know how. But I think it can be said that if we were uh, striving to live Christ but did not share Christ, then we actually would be selfish. We actually would be failing, falling short in the fullness of life as God intends for us. No. Much has been given to us. We are living the life of Christ. We need to share Him with others as well. No. And as we saw, these are the basic uh, commands of Jesus before He ascended into heaven. To go. No. Proclaim the gospel. Make disciples. So, brothers and sisters, Live Christ, share Christ, tries to restore what is missing in our church uh, today. And what would be uh, some of those? First of all, a vision for evangelization. Why does our church exist? And when we talk of a vision for evangelization, which are, again, the final marching instructions of our Lord Jesus Christ, this Work has to be massive uh, simply because there is there are so many of our fellow Catholics that are to be reached. And of course, beyond the Catholics, uh, everyone else in the world as God intended. So we need, we need to have that, that vision. And Live Christ, Share Christ mission helps 
to to clarify and to concretize uh, and make uh, specific what that vision for evangelization is. Secondly, in trying to restore what is missing in our church today, the spirituality of Pentecost. This work uh, cannot really be effectively done apart from Pentecost. Because Pentecost is about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Spirit in our lives. It is about uh, em empowerment. And it is uh, key to, to massive worldwide evangelization. Acts 1 verse 8 says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So the Holy Spirit is crucial, not just for, for us uh, personally, to be able to grow in Christ, to be guided uh, by, by Jesus through His Spirit, but so, so that we might be gifted and equipped and empowered for this work of uh, evangelization. We need, it is critical for us to understand the role of the Holy Spirit. You know? Trinity, of course, three persons in one God. We know the Father and we know the Son is Jesus. But how about the Holy Spirit? What is the role of the Spirit? What is His importance to us in our day-to-day -day lives? Well, He is very, very uh, important and crucial. In fact, I think we can say that uh, there can be no real renewal in the church. There can be no revival of faith apart from Pentecost. So the spirituality of Pentecost is very crucial. And then thirdly, what LCSC can help restore or can try to, to uh, bring in is a vision for the parishes. Again, our church is divided into uh, parishes. But those parishes are not just for maintenance. Oh. And, and certainly the, that is part of it. Uh, there's a feast in most parishes that are provided. There are many programs. There are many ministries. There are many ways by which uh, parishes are assisted. Uh, there's counseling and all of these uh, important things. But it is not just about maintenance. It is not just about come to the parish, partake of the feast. But it is about mission. It is go out there. And, and bring back uh, the lost sheep. Go bring the light into the darkness of the world uh, outside. So this, this uh, vision uh, for parishes, uh, which are the subdivisions of our church, are very, very crucial. You know? And as I've said, there are many, many uh, gifts and programs within the church. That's the, the feast that is at our, our table in Catholic parishes. Uh, there's such diversity, but there ought to be unity in diversity. Huh? And how do we have unity in diversity? By having that common thread huh? that is under, underpinning everything that is the foundation of it all, and that is the work of evangelization. Again, as it is now, the programs, ministries, uh, organizations do their own thing. And of course, they have their particular calling. They fit a particular niche within the church, and that's fine. But there also has to be uh, that unity in such uh, diversity. And then we need to see that uh, the parishes are not just there for services, but for uh, intense formation. Formation is so very, very crucial. Formation is what is lacking for people to enter more deeply into uh, that, that life in, in, in Christ. You know? So it's not just, okay, you, uh, you, you have to go to Mass, you have to hear confession, you have to have your children baptized, uh, people get married, and so all of these are important, and they have to do with the sacraments of the Church, but it's not just that the Church provides these services, you know? but they, there needs to be uh, formation, growth in the faith, catechism, as well as uh, uh, more advanced uh, instruction and formation so that we will really know what it means to be a Christian and how to live it out. And then a fourth importance that LCSC is trying to address, it's a way to respond to the call to holiness and discipleship. And again, as I have said, uh, many lay Catholics are not truly aware of the call to holiness, 
do not really understand what it means to be a disciple. But all of this is, is are crucial. How can one be a, a an authentic Christian, fully living out the life of Christ, unless we understand these aspects, these crucial aspects in our life? And so this is how we want to help out with the Live Christ Share Christ mission. Now the Live Christ Share Christ mission has three basic components. First of all, it is the initiations program, uh, the, the, the way by which we help bring people back uh, to Christ, uh, to bring about repentance, metanoia, and turning to faith in Jesus. And that is the Life in Christ seminar. You know, we basically have a Life in Christ seminar of five sessions, though we have a longer uh, nine-session uh, seminar. But this seminar the five teachings that are there are basically based on the Sermon of Peter on the day of Pentecost. You know, that was an amazing time when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples and Peter was so emboldened. Oh, he was so full of zeal and, and with knowledge that he preached one sermon and 3,000 people were converted. You know? And the aspects of that uh, sermon of uh, Peter are the uh, five different sessions that are uh, in the Life in Christ uh, uh, seminar. You know? uh, so this basically is a, the proclamation of the gospel, which again is the missing first step. When you talk of evangelization, you can define it in many different ways, but the, 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 the very first step is the proclamation of the gospel. Before you can do anything else, you proclaim. What is the gospel? People need to hear. Paul tells us in Romans 10 verse 17, faith comes from hearing and what is heard is the word of God. So we need to proclaim the gospel. That is done through the Life in Christ seminar. The second component are what we call the four pillars. We have four basic uh, pillars. Live pure, live the word, live life, and live full. And just very, very quickly, we will take this up uh, uh, more, but very quickly, uh, Live Pure is about proclaiming the gospel of chastity, of purity to the youth. This is very, very important, especially today with sexual permissiveness, even among the very young, it is important for them to hear what is the call of God to them, to purity and to chastity. Then there's Live the Word. This is getting into the Bible. It is having a uh, simple uh, methodology called the uh, liturgical Bible study by which Catholics can get into the Bible. You know, uh, well, what, what is uh, one thing that is wrong in our church is Catholics do not know the Bible. They do not read the Bible. They do not study the Bible. They don't meditate on the Bible. So how can they base their lives on the Bible, the, the living Word of God? You know? And so this is very, very important. So. The Live the Word is a way to reach many Catholics with a simple methodology that can get them started. And then there's Live Life. This is all about the gospel of life. Because the assault today is basically against uh, family and life, the culture of uh, death that is in the world today. So we want to uh, explain and let our Catholics uh, appreciate more what is the gospel of life, what is it, uh, to be pro-life because even today there are uh, confusion that is coming uh, in this whole aspect so we want to make it clear and we want to uh, engage them into that kind of advocacy and then there's live full you know? and live full is our work uh, with the poor you know? the icon of poverty is an empty stomach so the counter to that is a full uh, stomach so to speak so live full this is done through the No One in Need, in need uh, uh, movement that is the expression of this work with the poor. This is very critical work. Uh, Jesus said that he came to bring glad tidings to the poor and even our eternal destiny uh, is uh, going to be in charge on what we did for the least of our brethren or what we did not do to them. So this is important work, the social dimension of the uh, gospel. So the four pillars. And then the third basic component is the, has to do with the formation. And this is the servant leaders formation or SELF. 
that we call. And here we have a lot of uh, teachings, a lot of uh, formation modules, uh, activities, congresses, uh, a lot of input that has to do with the Christian life in general and specifically uh, the life and mission of uh, Live Christ, Share Christ uh, mission. You know? And through the self program, we want to be able to train uh, parish workers for LCSC. So remember, again, this is not just what we as MFC would do, but we want to, as much as we can, to engage, as, and as much as we are accepted by the parishes, we want to engage the parish workers so that we will uh, expand the number of workers that are engaged in this in this work. You know? uh, we want to give them information uh, because this is something that is sorely lacking. In MFC, we have a lot of formation, but that is not the case for the ordinary lay Catholics. So they need formation as well. You know? And then we also connect with the basic ecclesial communities or the small Christian communities, uh, which uh, the parishes, the large parishes, are basically subdivided into these. So we want to connect with with those as well. And it connects quite well, uh, the Live Christ, Share Christ mission. And so, brothers and sisters, we are called to rapid, massive, and worldwide evangelization because there are so many people, especially Catholics, that need to be reached. 99 of the 100 sheep are lost. And we need to bring this work into the grassroots uh, at the peripheries. We want to go out there and reach out to all of our Catholics, especially those who are lapsed and who are lost. The intent of Live Christ, Share Christ is to mainstream Catholic lay evangelization. And this is very crucial for the intent of Christ uh, and also, uh, therefore, for the life of the church that he established to carry on his work. Our church is... To be truly missionary, we are a church on mission and we are called to be a holy church. All of this, my dear brothers and sisters, are what are crucial in the life of each and every Christian, of each and every Catholic. And we hope and pray that we can make our contribution to our beloved church so that our church will be fully online and on track with uh, God's intent that we be missionary and that we be holy missionaries doing the very work of God in the world today. Amen. God be praised. God bless you all.